Now, you grew up just across the fields there in the shadows of St. Alton's GA Club, but just tell us a little bit about what it was like for you growing up here. Um, I like, I'm very enjoyable. Um, I think I spent most of my time out in, the, out in the pitch. There's big changes there now compared to what it was when I, when I grew up there. Were you always goalkeeper? No, I always played Gaelic outfield and um, I think it, my cousin, who, his father was a League of Ireland player himself, he used to come up and visit from Selbridge and we would, uh, he'd stick me in goals, he was a little bit older, so he used to throw me into the nets for his shooting practice and that's how the goalkeeping sort of came about. So how did you end up then deciding to focus on just soccer? Um, it was probably down to a refereeing decision, I think, in, in the end. I ended up uh, being suspended for three months for giving the referee some friendly advice that he didn't appreciate. And I kind of concentrated on my soccer from, for, I won't say from then on, but certainly I focused on it for a number of years before uh, I played any Gaelic again. So tell us a little bit about your career, your early days anyway in the League of Ireland. Um, yeah, I was lucky to make a few appearances with St Francis and I joined Drotter then the following year where Harry McHugh was kind of assembling a new squad there and uh, we went on and won the first division that year and I suppose from then on in like you kind of got a taste for success and you think you were going to win something every year but it was, it was a while waiting for uh, any more success really. Joining St Pat's was a very good experience for you, you had some great nights in Europe. Yeah, I think um, some of the nights in Inchicore were, 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 were terrific and uh, we got some, some really big wins. I particularly remember beating uh, the Russian team, uh, Krilia Sovetov there 1-0 and then going over, going over there and having the, got, getting beat 3-2, which put us through, was the best defeat we ever had. Linda mentioned that you really like Sligo. Um, tell me about your time there. Yeah, we, we, we both like Sligo. I think, um, um, yeah, we had terrific times in Sligo, obviously to go down and, and win the league. Paul Cook had assembled the squad and it was Ian Barraclough in the end who managed it uh, and you know to win the, the league after being in the league for so many years uh, was terrific and uh, I think both myself and Linda really enjoyed it in Sligo and uh, we, we brought home a Sligo lady as well. Was the dream always to get back home like to get back here and have a club close by? The plan always was to come home and like Dundalk is more or less a local club and the opportunity to join Dundalk and Stephen Kenny um, and I think if you turn it down, I don't think you'll get that opportunity again. So it was certainly, um, you know, the fact that the dog had been so successful and, and we're really um, planning to, you know, maintain that success. And it, it, look, it was a great opportunity to come back, to come in the first season and, you know, to win a double. I don't think it could have gone any better. I think um, we were probably a little bit disappointed, you know, that we didn't, you know, progress in Europe that year and we, we played Bathy Borisov. Uh, as we did the following year and I think we, we gave a real good account of ourselves in them games and obviously drew with the Memorial but we knew that the following year when it, the opportunity came around again that we were, we were capable of achieving, you know, I won't say what we did but we were capable of, uh, you know, of beating them and uh, uh, thankfully you know, that's, that all happened the following season and it was a uh, terrific time to be at the club. I know you didn't grow up always wanting to be a soccer player, but you did end up um, getting into the Ireland squad. How did that come about? I spoke to Seamus McDonough and he actually said, would you be interested in coming into training? And I said, absolutely. Um, and um, it basically all came about from then. And, and he, Martin came over to me later that night and he said, Look, we'll have you in, in, in March. I, to be honest with you, I didn't tell anyone because I told Linda, I didn't tell anyone because in case it fell through or that, but um, like I knew it was coming down the line, but it was, um, look, it was an opportunity to go in and you know, show the League of Ireland keepers are, are good and maybe some of the younger keepers down the line may get an opportunity off the back of it. So Gary, 500 appearances in the League of Ireland, that's pretty impressive. Did you ever think? No. No, I, I just think, I think... Even when you got to 400, did you think, right, I'm going to get I, to five? To be honest with you, I didn't know when I got to 400. There's obviously been a lot of talk about getting to five, but, you know, it's certainly something that, like, I think and, uh, the fact that I had, you know, gone away and played with the Gaelic and come back and, and stuff like that, it's, um, yeah, I didn't, I never thought that I would be making that sort of milestone. So tell me about this season. Big hopes for it? Yeah, I think it's been going well. Um, you know, obviously we're at the top of the table at the minute and uh, hopefully that stays that way. Um, but yeah, it's been a really good start for us. Um, it was a bit of a slow start, I think people were looking, we had two nil all draws to start with, but with a lot of new bodies in, in the squad and, and lads were gelling, but I think you know, the group itself knew that the quality was there and we have a big squad this year and you know, to get into the, the starting eleven and uh, even the squad can be a challenge at times, so it's, uh, you know, it all bodes well for the rest of the season.